Move to the engineer's report, item number one, presentation of the Holly-by-the-Sea Drainage Improvement Project by Baskerville Donovan. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in front of you, you have the final report. And with us this morning uh, is Ryan Weed, uh, Mr. Jim Waite, and we got Hillary Bauer and, and Mike Langston here with Baskerville Donovan to uh, go over the presentation for the Holly by the Sea drainage study. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. It's been a long time coming to get to this point. Uh, today we're here to present to you the findings of the Holly by the Sea drainage study and presentation uh, to uh, go along with that report. Uh, typically in our environment we call this a, a basin study, but this is a little larger area, uh, something that uh, you guys took uh, Next slide, Michael. Moved forward uh, in late 2013, early 2014, and we started uh, at that particular time on this basin study. Uh, this is a huge milestone today in the fact that uh, this drainage study uh, is the first of its kind in Santa Rosa County, a comprehensive study uh, of this magnitude. Uh, when we started this, process back in 2014, shortly after there was a huge storm. Uh, and yes, if we had the complete product at that time, it would have helped some, but a storm like that at that magnitude is not something that you're going to design for anyway. So uh, we got some lessons learned. You prepare for a storm like that like you would a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, it's, not, it's not something that you're going to design to. You just hunker down and then get the lessons learned out of it and move forward from, from that aspect. Uh, I will ask that you stay with us today uh, through this process before you, you if you want to stop and ask questions, this is very informal. Uh, it's not an action item, but uh, if you'll stay with us, we may answer some of the questions at the end. The way the presentation is set up, we'll go over and talk about some of the uh, identified areas of concern and then in addition to that, at the end, we'll go through a methodology of how we had arrive at, at those particular items. So what is the basin study or the model that we've created here? What is it going to do for you? This is the first step in planning uh, to address drainage issues, and particularly uh, in the Holly-by-the-Sea area. Next slide. As you can see, this, is, this uh, subdivision has been around for a long time. If you, if you look at the older map, you can see there's a lot of water and a lot of groundwater, uh, even back then. Uh, and in the late 2000s, uh, it started to develop a lot, or, or beginning in the late 90s and in the 2000s, started to develop a lot more. Now, when you start to address an, an area like this, you're not going to eliminate all of the drainage issues, but you're certainly going to address some areas of concern in there. What this model will help you do is identify paths, identify drainage paths, uh, and identify problematic areas. And minus this, uh, what you would typically be doing is looking at localized areas, uh, and many times without concern of what's going on down line of that. Uh, this is also going to provide you a tool for planning moving forward in the future. Next slide. It's a pretty big area. Uh, you've seen these numbers before in our updates to you that, that we've gone on over. It's about 8,100 acres, so it is a big area, and there's a lot of infrastructure there, and that is very time-consuming, uh, getting the elevations uh, on all of those culverts and uh, different drainage infrastructure within the area. When an area is this big, uh, a couple of inches matter. It, it doesn't seem like that when you're looking at a big area like this, but a couple of inches of water, uh, if it's below the threshold of your house, or if it's a couple of inches higher and it's in your house, it's a big deal then. So a couple of inches definitely matters in a situation like this. And I'll turn this over to Ryan. He's the uh, subject matter expert on this. And if you have any questions, uh, you can stop us. But uh, if you'll hang in with us, we'll probably answer some of those. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Mike, if you'll go on to the next slide. I'm just going to walk you through a little bit of the process that we took um, in doing this. Um, we will get to um, the recommendations, but I'd like you to see some of the work that's gone, gone on because really at each step of the, of the process, a tool was created that's going to be useful to Santa Rosa County moving forward 
um, and not, not just for um, this one time in, in making the planning. It'll be something that will, will continue. So at the very beginning, of course, we had to gather as much data as we could. Now, um, there is a good deal of data that Santa Rosa County had. Um, there's also a, a good deal of data that is just available in the, in the, in the public, public information. And so we, we took as much of this as we could. Um, and <clears throat> of course, most of that uh, you know, requires evaluation in the office, but we also spent uh, a great deal of time in Holly by the Sea. So um, here's a few of the things that, that or a few of the, the big pieces of information that we had to, uh, to go after and to get. So of course, the, the inventory of the drainage system, um, we had to physically find all the, all the pipes under the road. And when I say all, all that um, correspond to the primary drainage system, okay? Um, as well as we had to identify all the, the drainage paths and where water goes. Um, in addition, we had to then go through and survey um, most or all of those drainage structures, some of those places we had information on, but a great deal of it we had to, to go and survey ourselves. And then, of course, we, uh, we sent out a um, sort of a questionnaire to the community in order to, to be able to understand the felt need um, of the Holly by the Sea community and that, the surrounding area. Now, uh, let's just talk about the inventory uh, for a few minutes. This included, and I, I mentioned in brief, but this uh, included really every, every pipe that you have out under the road that, uh, that carries water from one location to another. Um, and, and I do say that, that is concerned with the primary drainage system. Um, in addition, we had to, um, to determine where that water went. So from each of those pipes, where does water go and how does it get to the bay and or the sound, okay? Um, which takes a, a good deal of work, and, and in addition, it takes a lot of uh, being on the ground and, and tracing out some of those some of those paths. So, in the in summary, though, what what now Santa Rosa County has is is a map that shows your infrastructure in Holly by the Sea, along with a good deal of survey data, and that that is something that can be, of course, we use for our modeling efforts, but in um, in the future, we'll be able to use by um, Santa Rosa County. Um, Stevens Group and, and so forth. Um, um, this is just a little bit about the questionnaires that we sent out. Um, and we, we sent out, well, I shouldn't say sent out, we advertised the questionnaires in, in a few different ways, okay? And so that it went out, uh, an advertisement went out through your own um, public information office, um, and it went out to uh, the Holly by Sea Homeowners Association. We put it on our own website so that people could take the survey there. In addition, um, several sources of, of social media. And the results of those responses, um, well, really, we, we got about 160 questionnaires that were returned, okay, um, give or take in, in the range. So those discuss things, uh, and we asked specifically about um, people's homes flooding or businesses. Um, we asked about streets that flood, and we asked about um, yard flooding. Um, almost almost to, the, um, to the questionnaire, um, people mentioned home flooding. I'm sorry, let me take that back. People mentioned yard flooding and street flooding. Um, in fact, when we put it on a map, it covered most every road, not the ex entire extent of the road, but it, it touched on most every road within, particularly Holly by the Sea proper. Um, and most, most all of the, the respondents indicated that they had yard flooding. Sometimes it would, would stay for, for days and weeks. Okay? Um, and in addition, there were, there were people who responded that they had home floodings, okay? Um, which some of, uh, you know, it, it really came down to about a dozen um, individuals that, that mentioned that. And that's discussed in, in the report just a little bit. So with this information, um, we went back and, and we start to throw around the word modeling very quickly. And so let me, let me take a, a side really quick um, and just discuss what that is. Um, when, when you're looking at a, a very small area, um, and you're looking at the at drainage, there's, there's some little equations and there's some um, principles that we use to determine how much water runs off of a given property, okay? And in doing that, though, and when we're, we're looking at design, we have to know um, where the water comes from, where it goes, and so for a small area, we can look on a map and usually tell. What happens, though, when you have a larger area, and this is in the range of 13 square miles, is that, and particularly Holly by the Sea because it's so flat, is that it's very difficult to tell just from a map um, or even just from the topography where the water actually goes and what is affecting other locations. And so this model is a way for us to put all of the infrastructure um, into a computer system with topography, with information on soils, with land use, 
and see what runs off in a given location, where it goes, and how it impacts other areas within Holly by the Sea. I've, I've heard mentioned that, uh, that you hear a lot that if, if you, know, you do one thing here, then it's gonna affect something else in another location. That's very true. And so this is a way of determining what's gonna happen when you do affect something in one location. What will be um, the effect in another? Okay, and so here you see just some of the information we use to plug into the, what we're calling a model, okay? There's, of course, field data, the public information that we gathered in it, and, um, and I've named them already, but mostly that's uh, soils, land use, topography. There are definitely uh, other items, but those were mostly, most of the large ones. When we did that, <clears throat> we then um, were able to produce uh, something that looks about like this. This, and, and you've seen this before, this was, uh, was shown to you during the, um, during the summer, uh, an, an update that we gave you. But this is the existing conditions model for the 100-year storm, okay? That 100-year storm being, um, being the, the storm that statistically um, only has a chance of happening about 1% um, in any given year. And so um, here you'll see a coloration that, that, um, that kind of grades the, the flow depth um, in any given place. And you'll see a lot of color. Um, let, me, uh, let me point out that the, the biggest portions of that color are within areas that are already um, considered non-developable. Okay? They're wetland, they're, they're already conservation. However, that does then affect the rest of Holly by the Sea. Mike? Missing just a little bit of the top of it. Not that that's a bad thing, yeah. Um, and so with this information, then we began looking at the areas that were um, having, of course, the, some of the worst flooding and began looking at um, how we could um, plan and evaluate some conceptual improvements to, um, to improve those conditions. And this is just a little bit of our approach. Of course, looking at the Holly by the Sea um, drainage system, we, we immediately realized that we we're going to have to make some improvements to the existing drainage system. That's just for the sake of getting water out of the area, okay? And so we knew that was gonna to have to happen. And in addition, we began looking for new outfalls. Can we in some way route stormwater that's always gone one way, a different direction, maybe a shorter, um, a shorter path um, to, to an outfall, to the bay, to the sound, okay? Um, and in addition, we, we put in there a few, um, and not many, but a few policy recommendations just for the, the board and the county to consider in, uh, in how to operate the, the drainage system. And that, that resulted in about 30 plus conceptual improvements that um, we're gonna explain here in a little bit. Um, now, uh, here's, here's a list, and I, I apologize that, that, uh, that this is um, a little small on the screen, but what I wanna show you is the information that we're giving you. This is a, a list of the improvements, um, and I'm, I'm gonna point a little bit if you'd like to look at the big screen. But for each of, the, each of the improvements that we've suggested, you, you have a little identifier over here, okay? Um, please don't get hung up on that. That's really for us. It's just an identification. Um, so that number doesn't really mean anything, okay? I don't, I don't want people to get confused over it, <clears throat> but just know that that's, that's mostly for me. Um, the, then there's a, a name given to each of the projects, again, just for us to have a name and to be able to call it something. Um, and, then, and then each of the projects has been scored Okay, you'll see at the very end, this is a score that I'm gonna discuss in just a minute. And then there's been a, a project cost associated with that, which will take in, takes into account construction, um, engineering, permitting, so on and so forth, okay? <clears throat> now, again, this is uh, a little small on the screen, but this is, this is how we developed our scores, okay? So for each project, <clears throat> forgive me, for each project, um, we looked at the, the effects uh, of that improvement and what's gonna, um, what is going to be felt in Holly by the Sea. And then we began counting, and this is just a, a very simple way to, to compare the benefit of these projects. Okay, the benefit in terms of flooding reduction. All right, and so certainly there are other factors to be considered in terms of um, projects and so forth. Thank you, sir, I do appreciate it. <laughs> Certainly, there's other um, items that need to be considered when, um, when we go into planning. However, this is just a, a way for us to compare the, the benefit for flooding reduction. First off, um, you'll notice, and that's in this column here, um, we looked at the number of, of homes that, that we know have had flooding issues based upon the questionnaires and so forth. 
and how many of those are affected. I'll have to tell you, there, you'll see a few in here, um, but by and large, a lot of the, the homes that we saw were in, um, in locations compared to the road that would be really difficult to protect, and, and honestly, that we wouldn't be able to say that we could protect in all circumstances. Um, but when, when we thought we could uh, um, provide, provide relief for one of those, those homes, we counted it, and then we gave it a weight above any of the other things by a count of three. Okay, so, so one home being protected counts, um, counts greater than a road being protected, necessarily. In addition, we looked at the, the roads um, and crossings that, where there would be a, you know, a reduction, and this is where we have, it, we have seen that water overtops the road, and then now water is below the road surface, okay, making it passable again. Those scores are then added up. To, uh, to receive an individual score, and then we consider how much that one project accounts for or makes way for something in the future, okay? So that's added in and given a, a final score. So that's just a little bit. I apologize if that's lengthy, but I want you to see how we got to, to this point. Michael, if you'll go on. <clears throat> so now a, a little bit on, on what we're calling project dependence, and, and this is to try to explain and clarify how um, you hear often um, that something in one place will affect another. As I mentioned, that's absolutely the case. Here you can see, and, and I, don't want, uh, I don't, don't want you to get hung up on the basins necessarily, but you'll see the green lines, okay? Those, those green lines indicate individual basins within Holly-by-the-Sea, so that it, all the area encompassed by one of those green lines goes to it, it leaves Holly by the Sea roughly in the same location, okay? And so you'll see, and let's just, let's just pick a spot for a second. If, I, if I'm looking at this road right here, which I, I believe is Basswood, if I'm looking at this road and wanting to make a repair here, um, that, is, that is then going to flow into this area, which is a, a tributary of Tom King Bayou, which will then flow into Tom King Bayou. So if I, make, if I make improvements here, it will then affect the downstream Tom King ba or tributary to Tom King Bayou and Tom King Bayou. So I have to make sure then that there's, there's not any flooding conditions that I'm going to worsen downstream. So that when we talk about dependence and we talk about projects affecting another, that's what we're, we're trying, to, um, trying to show. Michael, if you move on, and there's going to be three kind of in a row that we'll move through quickly. So in order, to, <clears throat> in order to explain this, we've tried to color code the projects for you. And this is to show if, if one can be done right now, we're going to call it independent, okay? This is one that can be done before anything else. Um, and Michael, keep going through these. Then um, another pro th I'm sorry, the next color is going to be orange. So yellow for independent. Orange are the projects that um, we're calling D1, dependent projects. And so these projects depend on, on one other project to go before, before we, can, we can do them. And then there, the next one would be um, D2 or D3 dependent projects, which these are projects that require two other projects to be done, okay? And so, Michael, if you'll go forward, you'll start to see this, and we're just going to kind of layer it in <clears throat> to the map. Um, so shown here in yellow are our independent projects. You'll see several, okay? And then these blocks, by the way, you'll see a few here. Um, those are just because, uh, those blocks are just shown because we're talking about systems in that general area, not that they cover, um, you know, not that that not that there's something over that entire area. Um, but you'll notice um, some, of the, some of the first projects that are going to be, have to be done, um, there's several, there's several that are independent and, and could be done. Um, but you'll notice that several, uh, several of them also cover a lot of larger, um, larger areas, particularly here and here with your two main outfalls, uh, Williams Creek and Tom King Bayou, um, that those, a lot of those tributaries are um, just really thick with woody vegetation, and they're going to have to um, have some manner to being maintained, some grading within those areas. And so we've, we've shown some projects to improve um, these, these channels as well as to give you access to them in the future, which is a, a problem that I believe you have right now. You don't really have access to, to several of those. And not, I, don't, I don't mean legal access. I mean physically it'd be, you're not able to get there. Um, okay, so here's your independent projects next. Um, we'll see the, and I think we, we got them all, but that's, that's fine. You'll notice that, <clears throat> that now, here we go. <clears throat> now you'll notice the orange projects begin to, to come in, and these are starting to spread out a little bit more through Holly-by-the-Sea. So some of the, 
the yellow ones, the independent projects, are ones that we have to get moving, um, you know, to get anything else to happen. Um, but unfortunately, they're they're often kind of over in the corners, or they're in areas where they're um, where they're not, um, you know, in the places where there's the felt need. But then, um, when those are clear, when we've been able to make some improvements, then we can start bringing in a lot of these um, orange or dependent projects. Okay. And those are ones that are, are waiting on some ind independent projects to go and that are going to start kind of filtering in to Holly by the Sea. And you'll, you'll notice, particularly on this west side, um, that a lot of those have to do with these north-south roads. Many of the north-south roads, particularly in this area here, okay, um, many of those north-south roads carry water from your wetlands to Tom King Bayou. And along the way, there's flooding. Um, that flooding is, for numerous reasons, particularly because of the... The topography that's there, very flat, and you have a high groundwater table. So most all of your water runs off, and it doesn't move anywhere quickly. Um, Michael, go ahead and bring in the next. And so here, then, you'll, just, you'll see the, the red projects come in. There's, there's not a lot of them. There's uh, it's either three or four. Um, but these are projects that are waiting on, will be waiting on several others to take place. Um, but with this, um, with this, then, we have um, several now, new outfalls, we've made improvements to the, the existing drainage system, and, and these are going to be um, these are going to be projects that will then make as efficient as possible the drainage system um, that is within Holly by the Sea. Okay. Michael, where are you going? Mr. Chairman, at, at this point, I think it would be appropriate for us to stop here. This is really good stuff here, and see if you have any questions before we move forward with this. So if you have any questions, this, this uh, Michael, if you want to go back one, this, this information that you see on this slide here is really your uh, plan moving forward on how you address things. And I want to make sure that we've seen this 100 times, so it's easy for us to comprehend, but we want to make sure it's fresh for you guys. This is the first time you've seen it. So I want to make sure that uh, we do a good job of explaining it to you and how we go from a dependent one or an independent project to a dependent one and to a dependent two. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Any questions at this point? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Cole. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, looking at this makes me glad that I'm a commissioner in the northern part of the county. <laughs> and I'm looking down here at Commissioner Salter and he's smiling, but it's, it's really nothing to laugh about. And, when I look at this, I just roughly tried to add up the independent movements, and it's well over $35 million just in that portion. Uh, have you segregated or identified? To me, as a commissioner, we all work together. We, we're we're going to vote on this. We, we know we don't have a designated funding source for it. So I would think what I have to look at is, okay, first, whose house is getting water into it, and who can't get down their street in case of an emergency. That's, to me, those, you know, when I'm looking at that kind of money, I can't just stroke a check for $35 million and tell you guys to get to work. I, I, I would need to figure out a category to put these in. How, how do we help our citizens overcome this? At the bottom of my list is going to be the person that says, well, I got water standing in my front yard for two weeks and, and I don't like it sitting there. Well, I, I'm, I'm concerned with the people that have water in their house and not particularly in a garage, but in their living quarters and people that would be unable to get away from their home in case of, of an emergency or emergency management couldn't get to those people. And then, and then categorize the fixes from there. And I don't know if you've you know, gone into it that far. Maybe later on we'll get into how you would categorize them. Uh, as the gentleman said, you know, these numbers that he's using is not to miscue us or the public that this is a category or the order they're going to be worked in. So clarifying that, but do you have some sort of category that we can work with to, to, to address that? And would the rest of this board agree that that's the maybe a criteria we need to stand up for how we help our citizens in this area. I, I certainly can lean to Ryan. He's definitely been involved uh, and he's a subject matter expert on this, but I can tell you that public safety and flooding of structures are always going to be the top concern. 
we, we know some projects, if you look at them through the ranking system, may not rank as high, but uh, they may have a bigger effect on other people. And if we can do those independently, then certainly that's something that we'll work with staff and work with you on uh, addressing those up front. The, the real thing we have to look at, though, is to make sure that we don't have to do something downstream or downline before we get to that project, or we may create an issue downstream. And, Com Commissioner Cole, may I, I'm, I'm not quite certain I understood. I know what you're saying. I'm not quite sure I would, I would understand what the categories would necessarily be. Are you saying, are you asking if, if each project needs to, we need to know like the, the impact on a given area, a given street? Well, yeah, I, I would see that. I mean, certainly I would think the independent movements would be, or improvements would be possibly where we could, you know, start looking at funding for. Mm -hmm. But how do we select those? And my suggestion, as, as Jim said, is naturally going to be public safety mm -hmm. and certainly and you know and people's houses getting wet in, inside the uh, living quarters. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, is that something that you've already have developed criteria well, for, or do we, as a board, need to give you instructions, give staff instructions that you know this is how we want to uh, categorize these? Because you could say, okay, this, this is going to, any one of these is going to have the greatest mm -hmm. effect for the number of people, but, but we, we need to know, sure, it's going to affect those people, but how is it, how is it affecting them? Is it okay. keeping water out of their homes? Is it enabling the yes, fire sir. department to get there? Mm -hmm. uh, whatever that is. Because okay. we may say, okay, there's less people on this project uh, versus this project, but, but you're getting more water out of houses here. I understand. Thing, so. um, yes and no. So, yeah. so yes, in, in terms of we, we know the streets that are being impacted and, and the, the homes that would be impacted. Um, I should say flooding homes that would be impacted by a particular project. Um, but in, in terms of total, um, total homes that would feel some reduction, I don't, I don't have those, those numbers in, in the formula okay. at the moment. So. Thank you. Any other questions at this point? Commissioner Rob Williams? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the uh, one thing, uh, we have the map that uh, has the different color schemes. It, it looks kind of like that one color is an auburn orange. Is very that, close. Is it very, Extremely very close? close? I think the map would e be easier to uh, clarify if we had a more of a garnet and gold type of color scheme. There you go. Up there, yeah, I tried. just, to, just <laughs> as a recommend <laughs> suggestion. Um, but I, I do thank you for the work that uh, you've done on this. This is extraordinary stuff. I'm a little disappointed to hear that Commissioner Cole does not want to fund this from rec <laughs> funds in his uh, district. But um, we'll press on. The overall number we're somewhere a little north of 60 million um, as we stand here <clears> today. Uh, I believe the the final number was 86. No. Um, and, and when we, the 60 and the 60 million number was actually taking out some of those um, was taking off some of the low scoring high dollar values but again those were those were ones that I, I put in because I wanted to, you to see what would what you'd have to do in order to affect a particular area um, but the total number was was over 80 million yes, can sir. you quantify uh, give us a dollar amount an idea of if we have an 86 million we get to do everything we strip it down we're in that 60 million dollar range for another tier, what in your mind would be, a, do you have any idea of a total of, if we were to look out the next three to five years, of what could immediately provide relief to residents that, I understand Commissioner Cole's uh, comments about flooding in the home versus flooding in the yard, but uh, I would argue that if it's flooding in your yard and your investment, it's pretty important to you. Yeah. And um, there is evidence that um, these flooding events um, for there to be negative impacts in Holly by the Sea or in some areas of South Santa Rosa County, it, it doesn't take a flooding event anymore. It, it just takes a good thunderstorm or, you know, we have those rain periods in the springtime. So it's, as we continue to grow and have that development, it's becoming more prevalent. So can you give me an idea of, okay, three to five years to make the biggest initial impact, would you say would be in the 20 million, 30 million 
Do you know that number? That'd be something you'd have to kind of take a look at and maybe come back to us. With. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to take a look at it. When we're talking about dollar figures like this, I, I hate to, to mention it off the cuff. So okay. um, we'll be happy to look at something. That's fine. Um, also, did want to say thank you to my fellow board members for seeing that there was a critical need and um, that in going ahead and making the steps necessary to bring this uh, first of its kind study to completion. Um, I like the tool for planning portion. That's obviously very important. Um, and then what was important to me was that action plan of what, not only what we do moving forward, but as we talked about in our meetings, how do we explain the why to the folks that are in the neighborhood that are going through their daily lives and, and they don't understand why we've decided to start with Camden Drive Outfall Project instead of another one. And so I, I like how you've done the scoring. I like how you've done the color scheme because that's something that's translatable. Um, but I still think it's critical that you work with our PIO to determine how can we communicate throughout the process. Um, you know, we want to make sure that this information is provided to the Holly by the Sea Board of Directors. We want to make sure this information is provided to the public. I'd like to see a public meeting held um, with, at, you know, Holly by the Sea area, um, if they would be amenable to that, to where we could get the information out there. Obviously, putting a link on the website. But then, um, Tony, I'd love to see us work with uh, Brandy, the new PIO. It seems like we do a great job of. You know, we, we identify a need, we work toward the solution, and then we get the, the problem, you know, taken care of, or we deliver the study, and then the follow-up, you know, it's we're on to the next thing. And um, so to me, this is a living, breathing document. We're not going to come up with 80 million anytime <clears throat> soon. So for folks that may be moving into the area, for folks that want to know where they stand in the process, that may not be familiar with what's going on, I think it's critical that we're able to send them to something on the website that not only gives them the information of how the study came about, but where we are in the process. Um, and then finally, I would say on the priorities. Uh, when we go ask for funding, I um, just got back from Tallahassee meeting with Chairman Albritton, and he showed me a stack, it's more like this, and a binder of all the water quality projects. And uh, said, you know, why should we choose this one? And I told him that because of this state-of-the-art study that had been done, that Camden Drive, that, that outfall had been identified as the number one project priority. Um, and then when I look at the scoring, that may not match with what we submitted. Can you speak a little bit to the priorities, how um, those priorities were established? And I know you've had the matrix up there that, that talked about that, but. Um, like affected homes is affected to you structural flooding or yard flooding uh, and I don't want to get too far in the weeds but I feel it's important that before we leave here today you speak a little bit more to the priorities how did we identify what project is the number one priority that this board can know we need to go with one voice and one shared vision and trying to get the funding for that priority and that you know we can talk about why that'll deliver an impact so if you wouldn't mind just speak to the priority a little bit and how it's determined okay <clears throat> well, um, to begin with, we, did, we gave you a list and, and we scored them. We haven't necessarily put them in, in terms of, of priority. I think that's what you're, you're asking for. We did, in, in for the sake of, of uh, I'm sorry, uh, the grant application, um, we did put forward uh, a few projects that we thought were, would be, um, one, uh, the most useful, beneficial, and also the projects that, uh, many of these are gonna, gonna need property acquisition. There's gonna be certain types of, of permitting that we know we're gonna have to work through. And so in terms of priority, I would look at, at both the score um, and then um, the timeline that we would, that we would think it, ta it would take in terms of do we need property? Do we have to work out um, some, some issues with, with access, things like that, as well as, um, as permitting because <laughs> Many of your projects that need to go early on are going to require some um, some close review by the Corps of Engineers, um, and so um, and so in terms of priority, I would I would particularly moving forward quickly, I would look at the ones that that we thought we could do um, with we thought we could do independently of those that critical review. 
and Ryan, I apologize, I should have asked a better question. What, what I'm trying to get to is when we allocate dollars toward a project mm -hmm. as a result of one of the projects you've identified mm -hmm. in the study, how do we know that that is going to provide the greatest amount of relief? How are we determining which project we select? I, and the scoring notwithstanding. So I think it goes directly to what Commissioner Cole was saying. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we're making the biggest amount of impact mm -hmm. and that the money that we're spending, we're maximizing and leveraging every dollar. Uh, restore, for example, how do we know which of these projects to include in the next multi-year implementation plan? Mm -hmm. So to me, the information that you've provided is critical. It looks like we've taken that step toward the scoring. Now it's taking that next step to determine with your professional recommendation, these are the priorities of where you need to be spending your efforts and your money. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, in terms of determining how many people is affected, of course, with, when, when you're talking about a home and, and the, for instance, the street that, that that home is on, I mean, we can certainly look at the, just the scope of the project and, and see what, what's going to be affected in terms of um, adjacent homes and so forth. Um, when you look at streets, however, that becomes a little difficult. Obviously, a, a street would, um, you know, a project on a given street would affect those who live on that street, but also in some locations, you know, there's, there's certain um, roads that everyone in Holly by the Sea uses. Um, so in terms of the, the roadways, that would be um, a, a, little, a little more difficult, but um, that's something that, you know, we can, we can begin putting together. It sounds like, if I'm hearing you correctly, we need to define the outcome that we're looking for. If it's to reduce street flooding or something related to street flooding, not necessarily structural flooding, then we need to determine that that's our desired outcome and then you can better prioritize the projects. I, I believe so. Um, however, I would say that the approach we've taken um, in the score is going to, um, to be very, I would think very close in line with, with what you're saying um, as, as really the, the roadways are going to um, kind of be your primary indicators. Granted, um, the home floodings will, we look at individually, but the home floodings, like actually water in a structure, um, those we, you know, again, we know, and we know about a dozen of those that have been mentioned. Um, the streets, then, um, you know, when when water's over a street, then, then things uh, we know water's in, in, you know, yards and so forth. Okay. Okay. I guess that's something that, with Stephen and Tony and staff, that you know, determining why we're going to move forward with a particular project. When will that project be complete, and what can the residents of Santa Rosa County expect as a result of us choosing that particular project? We have great information here, the first of its kind, but the only thing I'm hearing is we might not have that clear next step direction where we could go with confidence in knowing which project we want to move forward with, and I would imagine that's going to have to happen with your help, Mr. Furman. Anything Mr. else at this point? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner <coughs> Salter, and Commissioner Cole. Jim, you and I had a brief discussion the other day. Are, are you looking at, or are y'all looking at, starting upstream, going downstream? Because everything you do is going to have an impact on the other. You're going to start yeah. downstream and go upstream. Yes, sir. Because as I look at this and you start trying to figure out which projects you're going to recommend we do first, many of them, for example, Commissioner Williamson uh, identified Camden Drive. Well, then that's going to be dependent on doing something else somewhere else. Yes, sir. So everything's uh, going to be tied together, and it's going to be difficult to say we're going to do this project unless you look at the impact coming from someplace else. Well, that, that's definitely true. And in general, we're looking from downstream to upstream. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, just by good Commissioner oh. Cole, real quick, then we'll come back. And, Mr. Chairman, yeah. that question that Commissioner Salter posed is exactly where I was going with that. How do you ask for funding, let's say, for Candom, Candom Drive without getting funding? And I, I would think for this west part of Tom King Bayou, and, and including that prior, um, if I'm. Yes, sir, and, and with this one in particular, um, we, we actually put into the, um, we put into the application the, the most necessary, or the necessary portions of the downstream project. Okay. And, and I have one other question before we leave it. A lot of Holly by the Sea was designed years ago for swells. And we're 
a lot of people want culverts in front of their house now. They want to close them swells. And I can only think that a swell would hold more water than, than a, a piece of pipe and also have more capability of evaporating off and soaking into the ground. Are we, as we continue to do that, are we negatively affecting this study? I, w I wouldn't say that you're negatively affecting the study necessarily, um, but but I would say in those particular areas, um, you just you want to be very careful. I, I agree that typically a, a ditch and you know along a, a road is going to carry more water than a pipe. So um, I, w I would say that um, in those particular areas, um, if you're going to look at them, you know I want I want the pipe to be able to to carry you know um, roughly equivalent to the amount of water. Um, that the swale or the ditch did. Now, I understand why people are asking for, for it. That, that makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, I, I would say that we need to be very careful in, in what those, um, those effects would be. Okay. Commissioner Rob Williams. I just want to touch on Commissioner Salter's comments because it, it speaks to why this is so important uh, on the priority determination and giving staff some direction. Um, I know that we have an existing grant application that's been put forward on that project and you have several of us, many of us that go to Tallahassee and, and advocate on behalf of getting money for that project and it's important that we know that we're advocating for the correct project in the correct order, the correct priority that we can defend. So um, to me that's the next step is determining what we're going to use as uh, our key decision making, you know, if it's downstream, up, or what, whatever that is, just to where we have a shared vision of what success looks like. And um, I think this is phenomenal information, but in my mind, the next step is going to be determining what priorities they're going to be to where we can go and get the money. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Right. We'll continue on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we can continue on, Mike. And some of the questions that uh, you were asking, uh, we'll, we'll probably go over again right here uh, in this. Uh, so what you have now in, in front of you uh, with this, uh, all, as well as uh, Michael has back at his office, is the actual model. Okay, that is the planning tool moving forward. Uh, it was very clear of three or four years ago when this discussion first uh, came about that the board uh, was very clear in their instructions they did not want to study, as you mentioned, Commissioner Williamson earlier, that sat on the shelf. They wanted to see a plan of action moving forward on this. And to the extent that uh, there are a couple of design projects that we're going to do uh, as a part of this contract as well. So this isn't the end. We, we've just made a huge milestone. Uh, and then we'll continue working forward as we're uh, moving in through that process. We now have the system inventory. Again, this was the first step. In order for us to do uh, this planning, we needed the system inventory. What happens in many communities, uh, especially when funding is limited, as, as most of the time it is, is that it's usually a reaction, and it's a reaction to phone calls or, or a particular area, and, and that's just the normal thing to do. Uh, but in uh, many cases, when it's flat like this, as you can see, sometimes you're just moving the water down to another area, creating a problem downstream. It's not to say that we can't take an independent project, and if, we, if the funding is available and it's easy to permit, link that with a orange Auburn project and move that into a uh, Garnet project that we have up here. So we can move, if, it, if the funding was available, that we could go all three tiers, we could do that. The, the plan is laid out, and that's the reason it's laid out like that. They're interconnected. If, if there's a uh, D2 project or a second phase project, uh, then it is always connected to something downstream of that, as Commissioner Salter was talking about earlier. I think that was one of the driving forces for the board behind commissioning this study back in late 2013 um, when we first started talking about it was an acknowledgement that all of these areas are interconnected and we would have someone who wanted us to 
improve drainage in one particular area. And as compelling a case as they would make, the fact is that water has to go somewhere. And so in order to do long-term stormwater management and stormwater planning, you have to know where all of that water is going to be transmitted. And I think this is a, a, a great result, and it will show us uh, what types of projects we can do in, and minimize the impact downstream. And as you said, you, your independent projects, then D1, D2, all of those will work together. And then over time, there's no, there's no quick fix for any of this, but over time, um, we'll be able to make improvements uh, to the, the quality of life of the people down there who, who are experiencing flooding, Absolutely. whether it be road flooding, structure flooding, yard flooding, or what have you. Absolutely. And, and you've worked over the years, you've done a lot of work in Holly by the Sea to improve conditions and certainly have improved, as Commissioner Cole was uh, alluding to earlier, putting some culverts in and definitely improved some conditions there. But working without a plan, uh, a detailed plan, and this system inventory and existing conditions model, it was very, very difficult to do. And you realize that, and that was that's what brought about the study in this particular area. And Stephen, you, I mean, uh, Michael? Okay, so, so we have the existing conditions model, and now we'll look at conceptual improvements. That's where they are now is conceptual. We'll look further close, uh, closer to those, especially on the projects that we work with you and staff on as we move forward into design as well. Of course, all of these projects, uh, the big thing is you can do anything. Uh, all it takes is money, and, and that's the big... Uh, Thing with a lot of these projects. What funds do you have available? What projects are shovel ready that you can move quickly? You have to react many times in uh, grant situations. You have to react very quickly in legislative requests. You have to get those in order and get those very quickly in order to uh, leverage your opportunities here. Another thing you can do is if you have existing projects that you know you're going to do is leverage those opportunities. If we know we're going to improve a road or, or add a, a anything different to an area, then we can certainly come in and do drainage at the same time and minimize the cost associated with that and leverage those opportunities. Many of the communities we work with have uh, local option sales tax or stormwater utilities to address these. Other opportunities they look for is grant opportunities, and sometimes those are reactive when you have a big event and you're looking at a hazard mitigation grant or, or something along those lines as well. Okay, so we're not complete. Uh, we'll continue to work with your staff uh, as we look forward to the opportunity to get in to design on these. And uh, we'll be working very closely with staff, uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Williamson, uh, to get this information uh, in a format that uh, is acceptable and that may be easy to understand. Uh, it may be that we need to go down and have a holly by the sea meeting at the uh, uh, HOA, or the, maybe the next time you are in Holly-by-the-Sea or, or sometime after that you have quarterly meetings down there is attend one of those meetings and then update the area, uh, it, people in that area on the presentation. Uh, certainly they can contact us at any time. We will put this information on our website as well and work closely with your PIO uh, in providing links to your website as well. So. Mr. Any Chairman. questions you have? Commissioner. I realize that may be out of the scope of the original contract would be doing a public meeting. My only fear of me trying to do it is I would get a question about something and it, it would probably be beneficial if you were there, but it is the Holly by the Sea Stormwater Drainage Study, so I think um, it would be good for us to um, reach out. I see we have the uh, president of the uh, board here with us today. and. Um, reach out and, and see if there's a time that makes sense. I don't know if that's once we determine what the priorities are going to be to where, as I say, it's going to be important to where if they ask that board, they ask this board, any member of the public, staff, everybody knows what's the number one project. Everybody should be able to say what that is. And um, we've taken a big step toward getting there, but I, I don't know if we should have the meeting with them and the public now or if we should wait until we determine those priorities. But I, I do think it'll be important. And if that requires additional 
funding, then we can talk about what that would look like, and then the board can make a determination from there. Any other questions from the board? <coughs> Thank you, Jim. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Open it up for public comment. Sandra Cantu, 9577 Highway 90 East, Milton, Florida. My questions may be a little bit out of order. I apologize for that. This is one area that we're talking about, Holly by the Sea, right? So all the drainage problems and everything was are in Holly by the Sea. They studied the Holly by the Sea okay. area. All these improvements, construction and so forth were approved by an engineer, correct? I don't understand your question. An engineer has to approve all the sewage piping and everything like that, right? Holly by the Sea was platted in the 70s at a time when there were no state stormwater standards. So there, there's no drainage, there was no drainage back at when it was platted. So now we're, we're dealing with those sins of the past, trying to retrofit drainage uh, to an area that is flat, essentially. Okay, so it's a, not a matter of the engineers didn't know what they were doing. There, there, it was, were no there was no engineering there. There were, there were no stormwater standards back okay. in the 70s. Okay. At some point, don't we have to just say that there's too much building going on in a certain area and, it, and the, the land can't take care of all the drainage water? I think there are policy recommendations that will come out of the study uh, dealing with land use and, and development and density, and those are questions that will, will be answered in the future. So is this a problem that's just in Holly by the Sea, or do we have the same problems in the rest of Santa Rosa County? We have other areas in the county where we have similar problems, mm -hmm. where there are subdivisions that were laid out, again, before there were stormwater standards, and we're trying to, to work through those as well. This is just such a large area and impacts so <clears throat> many homes. I mean, this was the largest residential development in the state of Florida. And do septic tanks add to the drainage problems or help I don't alleviate? know the answer to that. I'll, I can defer to one of the engineers. I don't know that septic tanks really add to the, to the drainage issue. I'm getting a no. Nobody's, nobody's saying anything. No, I, I'm, our, our county engineer is, assistant is, is saying no, they do not add to the drainage problems. Okay. Septic tanks don't. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Salter. Just kind of help Ms. Cantu. Ms. Cantu, I was reading through the information here in Holly by the Sea, if I'm correct, is about a 7,000 acre project. So that's a big subdivision. Seventy three seventy five Olympia Street, Yvonne Harper. I just I had a question for the um, firm. Okay. From my understanding, the independent projects can be done immediately, right? It's hard, it's hard to hear. It's kind of Keep talking to the mic. Keep. The independent projects, those can be done now. Is that correct? And then dependent one would be dependent upon the independent projects. And then dependent two would be dependent upon dependent two and one. So with the priority, we would want to look at the independent projects first. Is that correct? And are those within the study, are those indicated for each project that's listed? Are they indicated as being independent or D1, D2? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, that was the first question. The second, que the second comment is I would be more than welcome or, or glad to have uh, Commissioner Williamson or this firm come and address the homeowners of Holly by the Sea. I've made that known. I've spoke with uh, Mr. Furman and, and Mr. Schmidt on, and Mr. Gomillion on several occasions about that. I totally understand questions about where we're going to go from here, and, and those plans have yet to be decided. But I would like to um, invite whomever would like to come, because there are a lot of questions about this study, and to maybe just do um, something similar to this morning, you know, maybe not as in depth, but just to have that provided to 
the homeowners association and then um, what is the plan now that we've got this and I think it is a very good comprehensive plan and I like that they've outlined your, the dependent projects that can be started now so what is the tentative next step is my question I think for the from my standpoint on the board it's going to be to digest the plan and review that and then uh, move forward at that point with criteria you know evaluate the projects what's feasible look at our different funding sources and uh, and then at that point start coming up with a plan to get some of these projects under construction how long do you think that will take before that process takes I I couldn't give you an estimate on on how long that process would take Rob do you have any idea well I just wanted to say that um, on the questions part I think that's a great suggestion and uh, with perhaps with our PIO we could create some type of portal we'll not only um, folks that have approached you that have questions but folks in general Ms. Cantu and others they'd have a central place where they could go pose those questions that way some folks could get their questions answered before the meeting but at the, at the minimum the meeting could be more productive knowing what some of those questions would be they could tailor maybe the content that they provide we start getting a lot of similar type questions we would know what to bring forward so we definitely need to work toward that and we will um, I don't know what the exact timeline would be but in my mind priorities determining what the priorities are and how we go about um, deciding what those priorities are to me is vitally important and I can tell you that this is my number one focus I mean for this year now that we have this study I've, I, I've said before that I've felt kind of helpless because we didn't want to do anything that was going to cause a negative uh, impact by starting on one project and then find out as a result of the study we should have started over here so I've just kind of been waiting now that we have this and we have definable metrics where we can start determining these priorities then that's all I want to do is uh, work on working partnering with our public works team and the residents of Holly by the sea and my fellow board members to try to get the funding and move these projects forward Escambia County you know they they will take one project a minimum a year and they include it in their budget and they have their priorities listed and everybody knows what the next one is on the list and everybody knows what they're supposed to be working on and they know why this project was selected over another one and you kind of have that shared vision of success so short answer shared vision of success priorities would be first and um, I can't give you a timeline but I give you my assurance that this is my number one focus and um, from in my opinion and this is not a slight on anyone in Holly by the sea but obviously you know people's concerns are what's important to them and that's their you know how it affects their home their street um, to alleviate flooding that happens there is it possible to schedule something out a meeting with the homeowners maybe a month from now and we've got a distribution email list of at least 2700 homeowners and can we get something from the county um, such as this presentation to send to homeowners so that they can then forward back questions and we can streamline those questions so that it is a more effective meeting is that possible It'll be, uh, the the study will be placed on the website and as mentioned earlier uh, you know county administrator will direct those efforts but uh, I would like to see the study put forward and then a timeline continuing the timeline that Baskerville Donovan has already provided what's that next bullet point in the timeline and um, you know we'll get there as Chairman Lynchard said we've got to kind of digest what we just received and then figure out the best way to prioritize the projects and communicate communicate what we're going to be doing next but it's coming I, I would feel no I, I wouldn't feel I, comfortable I, I, doing a date certain of within a month or something I would no I'm sorry I wasn't that. clear what I'm saying what what I my, what my request is is in order to get this information you know not setting not what projects are going to be setting first and, and not that but just the information that was provided today to get that before as many homeowners in, in the association as possible is there a way that we can um, that can be sent to me just from today it can be forwarded to the homeowners within Holly by the Sea they can send back any questions 
and then we can in, uh, invite, if they're able, and if you're able to, to come on an evening, maybe a month or so, just to present this information. So they're aware of what's going on and that this is what the study says, this is you know what our tentative plans are, not that you're gonna be starting a project next month or anything, that was not my I question. Think, in addition to the study, we can make this PowerPoint presentation from today available on, on our website. Um, that's a, you know, a succinct overview of the, the, the study. Um, and then we'll, we'll get, uh, get a link to you for that presentation. All right. Thanks, Yvonne. Come on up. Uh, Robert M. P. Peter Zane, 2861 PGA Boulevard. For clarification, and I think this is directed at the engineering group, uh, the 12 plus or minus flooded houses, I think we all agree, flooded houses or near flooded houses are certainly a, the highest priority. Are they located in one general area or one part of the map or they're, they're all over, all over? Okay, I was under the impression from watching this for a while that they were mostly the south and southeast corners. And are most of them located in adjacent to yellow areas, orange D1 dependent areas, or red D2 dependent areas? I mean, to fix, to fix the houses, are you going to have to go all the way upstream from all three phases? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Um, it would it'd be hard to say most at this point, but, um, but I'm, I'm going to just venture to say one, um, most of the houses are not next to um, a yellow independent project. That's, that's pretty sure. Um, I, I would say most of them are, are in the D2 range. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, if I may, while someone else is coming, the, the back page of the study where it says Holly by the Sea Drainage Improvement Program Scoring Matrix. Is that pretty accurate on flooding homes affected, flooded streets affected, and how you came up with that score? Is it, I'm sorry, the, specifically you're saying, is it accurate as to, the yes, sir, that- number of homes flooded? Um, it, that's the, the number of flooding homes that were affected by that particular improvement. Okay. Thank you. Come on up. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, Gerald Gallup, 1869 Flamingo Lane. Thank you for uh, allowing me here this morning. Mr. Gomelian and the staff, congratulations, Tony, on your uh, recent uh, position. I'd like to correct one thing first. We're going to correct colors. It should be crimson, the color of the national champions. Roll, tide, roll. Let's get our priorities straight here. I'd also, I think we should rename these 100-year storms to 10 years because in the last 20 years that I've lived down there, we've had this occurrence happen a couple times personally. I have a number of comments in no particular order, but I would like to state that I'm not envious of the challenge that the commissioners and the staff have to face, and I would offer that anything I could do, I'm more than willing and happy to work with uh, both you, the county commissioners, Mr. Gomelian, and Mr. Furman, who we've chatted before about water mitigation issues. In no particular order, uh, the elevation of new homes are facing runoff into properties on Flamingo and Candle Lane. Some of these comments are going to be very personal because they affect me personally, they affect my water or my home, and they affect my businesses, quite frankly. Uh, the, the drainage ditches, as uh, I believe the study points out, uh, have, not and w have not been maintained, and this contributes to a factor that would help the situation. Sewer extensions are needed throughout the Hollowed by the sea, which also goes into a bigger issue of sewer versus septic. I personally suffered this problem uh, during the storm of uh, April 2014. My drain lines were submerged, uh, whereby the toilets wouldn't flush, but luckily uh, they did not overflow into my house and did not suffer that damage. And luckily, about a day later, the uh, water perked down and we were able to uh, use those facilities. Uh, along the lines of that 10 year flood, we named that uh, the two floods. Uh, that happened in my place, uh, Lake Gallup, and I did take my John boat out and rode around there a little bit because it was deep enough to do so. And I have pictures if you'd ever like to see those. I also like to present that uh, some of the challenges is that the lots that could be used for stormwater retention have been sold to developers who are building high, high elevation and exasperating the problem. And this is a 
probably a point of contention I have with the policies of the county. I do not believe, Mr. Furman, that an individual lot should take precedence over the bigger picture, but we'll have a conversation on that yet again. Uh, the county turned away $5. million in hazardous mitigation program grants some seven years ago. I have to apologize. I don't know the extent of the current <clears throat> uh, mitigation or grant requests. I'll have to get up to speed on that. I believe Holly by the Sea needs to be placed number one in funding for mitigation. Again, I don't envy you in that the $6 million to $87 million cost, it could be daunting, but I do feel certain that county commissioners, the board, and we as civilians can address this issue and we will resolve it. I, I regret that only 160 people respond to this. I can say that we did, and I believe as uh, the community of Holly by the Sea, not to uh, overstep the bounds I have with the President Association, will be more than happy to work with you all. And in fact, we have a database. I'm not sure it was taken into account, but I know twice we've collected a database of problems out there and be more than happy to share this with you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm going to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Cole. If I might, uh, Mr. Gallagher, to clarify that turning down of that five point something million dollars, that was for, and I'm trying to go by recall here, a study that if we were not able to enact what that money brought to the table as far as in, in doing these projects, then we had to repay those dollars. And as you can see, there's, you know, how costly these projects are gonna be. We didn't have the money to, to enact it, so why, why take the money and then have to pay it back? Uh, we've got, I think, uh, the same study do, done that doesn't have those thresholds that we have to overcome. This is our study now. Whether we can incorporate 100% of it or none of it, it's, we're not being penalized for doing so. Uh, Commissioner Cole, given you a nice uh, age, I have forgotten about those things too, and I don't remember the exact details of that, but I do, there was some money, and I don't recall if we, the county, had to, had to uh, 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 match it or whatnot, but I'm just pointing out that there, there was money, and I hope this new grant, again, my ignorance of that situation, will go along to help this uh, alleviate this situation. This challenge, I consider this a challenge, not a problem, but a challenge we, as a group, can resolve. Any further questions? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Anyone else? All right, so there's no action on this for Thursday. Um, and we will, I'm sure, hear more about this in the weeks to come. Thank you.